this the second passage in our The Gospel Matters series and looking in this section at what it means for us to be a redeemed people. I really do encourage you to take some time to read this passage a few times just to familiarize yourself with it. Spend some time praying, asking God to open your eyes to see wonderful things from his word about both himself and about what he's done for us in Jesus. And to just see the spiritual blessings which we see here, every spiritual blessing in Christ. Paul spells out a whole lot of those spiritual blessings in this section and they really should cause us to rejoice in who we are as a redeemed people. And as you read through this section, look out for um, repeated ideas or repeated themes and highlight things that seem important that Paul is wanting us to see clearly about Jesus and about what he's done for us. And as I said, we're calling this, uh, we are redeemed, and it's focusing in on the redemption that we have in Jesus through his blood. But as a redeemed people, there are so many other spiritual blessings that are true of us that Paul highlights in this section. We'll go through those in a moment, but I just want to show you first this repetition of how Paul puts the spotlight on our Lord Jesus. And all of these things that he mentions in here are true of us in Christ or in him. We see that repetition a whole lot throughout this passage through Jesus Christ. So the focus is very much on our Lord Jesus, what he has achieved for us. But it starts by saying praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we see God in focus throughout here, what God has done through his Son for us. So we've got God the Father, God the Son, and also we're told uh, that we are sealed, marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. So we've got God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, um, all in the spotlight in this section. And Paul wants us to know just how blessed we are in Christ. And he highlights incredible things in this section. He chose us. He predestined us for adoption. He has freely given us his grace. As we've seen already, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, which he lavished on us. Again, by his grace, he has made known to us the mystery of his will to bring unity to all things. And again, we see here chosen, predestined. We are included in Christ. We are marked in the Holy Spirit. We have a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance. And again, until we reach the final redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. So there are incredible things that Paul highlights here. So every spiritual blessing, he chose us. He predestined us. He adopted us to sonship. He chose us to be holy and blameless in his sight. So he didn't just choose us and then leave us to go on life our own way, but he chose us to be holy and blameless. So he is doing the work of transforming us to be more and more like our Lord Jesus Christ. He predestined us for adoption to sonship through our Lord Jesus Christ. We become children of the King in accordance with his pleasure and will and we see throughout this section um, his pleasure and will God is at work doing his great work according to his way according to his pleasure and will in accordance with the riches of God's grace according to his good pleasure according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. So God is completely in control in this section. Um, the focus that Paul is putting on 
the blessings that are ours through Christ is a huge, huge focus um, that all flows out of the redemption that is ours through his blood. What our Lord Jesus has achieved for us is mind-boggling. And in the original Greek, these verses are just one long Greek sentence in which Paul is just overflowing with praise for who God is and what he's done for us in Jesus. And all of these things are written to encourage us. Sometimes as Christians, we can get stuck on this idea of being predestined. Uh, But Paul says it very clearly. He chose us before the creation of the world. He predestined us. So in eternity past, God chose who would be his. Now, this is an idea that we might not fully get our minds around, but we are trusting that God in his sovereign will has decided who will be his. And in us trusting that and actually rejoicing in that, we are acknowledging that God is God and we are not. Uh, We don't know who he chose, but he does. And we can trust him for that. And it's chosen to be holy and blameless, predestined for adoption to sonship as God's children. Uh, J.I. Packer speaks about us rejoicing in God as father and us being his children as one of the foundation marks that we need to understand. If we don't fully understand our adoption to sonship, then Packer says we don't have a very good understanding of Christianity. So these are wonderful blessings for us to rejoice in. So in eternity past, we were chosen, predestined for adoption. In the present, in him we have redemption, forgiveness, God's grace lavished on us. He's made known the secret of his will. He has united us and he will ultimately unite all things in heaven and earth under Christ, which is a future blessing. But that unity has begun. We'll see in chapter 2, the dividing wall of hostility has been broken down. He's chosen us again, predestined us, included. These are incredible present benefits, uh, blessings to delight in because we are in Christ. And They start in eternity past, before the creation of the world, and they will continue into eternity uh, because the Holy Spirit is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance. When the final redemption of God's people happens, when we are finally presented as holy and blameless in his sight. And we see Paul just absolutely amazed at what's happened. He says, in him we, he's talking about the Jews at that point, were also chosen, But then he says, and you also. (laughs) Gentile believers have also been included in Christ. It is a phenomenal thing. And the same blessings that are true of the Jewish Christians are true of the Gentile Christians. They're true for everyone. Every spiritual blessing is available to those whom God has chosen, who he's predestined, who he has redeemed. And all of these things should cause us to be a people who live for the praise of God's glory. And that's an important uh, thing to note in this section. Paul starts on a note of praise, or he says, Blessed be the God and Father. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then there's this repeated phrase, To the praise of his glorious grace. For the praise of his glory, to the praise of of his glory. In everything, all of this that these spiritual blessings that are ours in Christ are meant to result in God being praised for his glorious grace. And as we reflect on these things that are true of us as God's redeemed people, they should thrill our hearts, they should amaze us, they should humble us, they should cause us to stand in awe And that then should result in us living for the praise of God's glorious grace. As we read through this section, it's almost as if Paul is saying, Christian, have you even begun to realize how blessed you are? We have been blessed from eternity past into the present until eternity to come. In the present, we are to live for the praise of his glory and in eternity, we will be living for the praise of his glory. It's all about him. It's all about what he has done. And as his redeemed people, we should be a people who are known to praise him. 
And we get to praise him as people ask us about who we are as Christians. We can say we are chosen and adopted. That's all because of what Jesus has done. We are redeemed. We are forgiven. That is all because of what Jesus has done. We've been lavished with God's grace. He's told us the mysteries of his will. We're included. We are marked with the Holy Spirit. We have this deposit guaranteeing our inheritance all because of Jesus. And so we should be a people who are overflowing with praise to the glory of his grace. And as you dig into this further, I encourage you to challenge those who you're teaching, to challenge your own heart, to think about how we can reflect on these truths that are true of us as God's redeemed people, and then to live in the light of them in a way that will bring praise and glory to Jesus. Well, God bless as you dig in further, and I pray that this would cause your own heart to rejoice and that God would be glorified as you teach this to others. Mm-hmm.